Welcome back to Mental Math. Here's a challenge that looks impossible at first. This integral seems to demand complex calculus techniques. But what if I told you we could solve it without doing any integration at all? The secret lies in seeing what's truly hiding beneath the surface. Let's unlock it. Our first goal is to simplify the quadratic expression negative x squared plus 8x minus 12. A powerful technique for this is completing the square. We begin with the expression itself. To prepare for completing the square, we need the coefficient of x squared to be 1. So, we'll factor out a negative one from the first two terms. This gives us the negative of the quantity x squared minus 8x, leaving the minus 12 outside. Now, focus on the expression inside the parentheses. To complete the square, we take half of the coefficient of x, which is negative 8, resulting in negative 4. We then square this result, negative 4, which gives us positive 16. This is the number we need to create a perfect square trinomial. To maintain the value of the expression, we will both add and subtract 16 inside the parentheses. This manipulation doesn't change the expression's overall value, but it regroups the terms in a very useful way. The first three terms, x squared minus 8x plus 16, now form a perfect square. This perfect square trinomial factors into the quantity x minus 4 squared. Next, to simplify further, we distribute the leading negative sign back into the large parentheses. The term x minus 4 squared becomes negative, and the negative 16 becomes positive 16. The final step in this simplification is to combine the constant terms. 16 minus 12 is 4. This gives our final simplified expression, 4 minus the quantity x minus 4 squared. Now we substitute this simplified expression back into our original integral. This will reveal a surprising geometric structure. Our integral is now the integral from 2 to 6 of the square root of 4 minus the quantity x minus 4 squared. This form is very suggestive. Let's analyze the function y equals the integrand. This function defines the curve whose area we are calculating. We set y equal to our function. Because of the square root, y must be non-negative, which means we are dealing with the upper half of a shape. To make the underlying structure clearer, let's square both sides of the equation to eliminate the square root. This gives us y squared equals 4 minus the quantity x minus 4 squared. Now, let's rearrange the equation by moving the x term to the left-hand side. Adding the x term to both sides, we get the quantity x minus 4 squared plus y squared equals 4. This is unmistakable. This is the standard equation of a circle, where the point h, k, is the center and r is the radius. By comparing our equation to this standard form, we can identify its properties. The h value is 4, k is 0, and r squared is 4. This tells us our equation describes a circle centered at the point 4, 0 with its radius squared equal to 4. Taking the square root gives us the radius. The radius r is therefore 2. The integral represents the area under the curve y from x equals 2 to x equals 6. Geometrically, this is the area of a semicircle. Let's visualize this on a coordinate plane. Here is the plot of our function, the upper semicircle with center at 4, 0 and radius 2. The limits of our integral are from 2 to 6. Notice that the center is at x equals 4 and the radius is 2. So these limits correspond exactly to the endpoints of the semicircle's diameter. Therefore, the value of the definite integral is precisely the area of this shaded region which is the area of the entire semicircle. The formula for the area of a semicircle is 1 half pi times the radius squared. We have already determined that our radius, r, is 2. 
substituting r equals 2 into the formula. First, we evaluate the exponent. 2 squared is 4. This simplifies the calculation to 1 half of 4 pi. Finally, multiplying by 1 half gives us the result. The area is exactly 2 pi. Let's state our final answer clearly. By recognizing the integral as the area of a semicircle, we found its value to be 2 pi, avoiding a much more difficult direct integration. This problem beautifully illustrates the power of geometric interpretation in calculus. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this problem, give it a like and subscribe for more. See you next time.